We have just learned how to establish a signaling connection channel using the Google App Engine Channel API. Let's move on to understanding the basic WebRTC API and its main uses. Upon completing this video, you will discover how to easily access the MediaStream API's common functions, which are mostly used for user multimedia devices access. In the previous section, we inspected how to properly configure and manage our backend development environment. Now, we'll start seeing the first step needed to properly build a WebRTC-ready peer-to-peer -peer client. As you can imagine, one of the most important steps before correctly establishing a full multimedia communication is to properly acquire access to multimedia devices, such as webcam and microphone. MediaStream API is a part of a WebRTC specification. It's mainly used to describe stream of audio or video data, and it defines the methods to interoperate with them. It allows to set the necessary callback to handle instances of success or error while using asynchronous methods and events. The web page you see is the current working draft of MediaStream API that is being edited and developed by W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. The API helps you create a MediaStream object that represents a stream of audio or video data. A MediaStream object could typically be represented by a simple URL string, used as a reference for the real data, that could be stored in a DOM file or blob object. MediaStream objects could be divided into two categories, local or remote. Local object of media stream type is called local if it was generated through get user media method. In this case, its source input is taken by a local microphone or camera. A media stream object could also represent a remote media element, originated through the network and obtained via the WebRTC peer connection API. Now, let's see a practical example of media resources request through a web browser. We'll develop a simple app that requests its user media and will be displayed inside a video element in a static web page. Open the Eclipse IDE. Create a new HTML file, for example, test.html. Then start writing a typical structure of an HTML page. Please note that Chrome blocks a lot of stuff on the file URIs without reporting a security error. So our best option will be to serve the web page from a local web server. We can use the embedded Jetty server on the App Engine framework. To allow the web server to properly distribute our web page, we have to create the test.html file under the work folder of our project. For this kind of example, we can use the same project we created in the previous section. So right click on the Word directory, then select New, select New File, and write down the name chosen for that file test.html. Then click on Finish. The Eclipse editor should open it up automatically. At this point, start writing a standard structure for a simple web page. We can use a very simple structure, composed of the head and body elements. We can now define the video object that is required to display images from the user's webcam and the JavaScript container to access media devices through MediaStream API. We also need to set the autoplay tag to enable automatic playback when the SRC property will be set. Now we have to define the JavaScript code to request user media. We need to use the navigator object. Please note that the navigator interface represents the state and the identity of the user agent. It allows scripts to query the browser and to register themselves to carry on some activities. Since we want to use the Chrome web browser, we have to use the WebKit get user media method to request all the required media. The first functions argument is the constraint on the media that has to be requested to the user. In our case, we only declare the video access as mandatory because we want to display it into the HTML video element. The second and third arguments are callback functions, used in case of success or error taking media access through the web browser. As you can see, in case of success, we set the SRC property of video elements with URI of webcam video stream. The URL.createObjectURL static method creates a DOM string containing a URL representing the object given in the parameter. The URL lifetime is tied to the document in the window on which it was created. The new object URL represents the specified file object or blob object. In case of failure, we present a pop-up reporting the problem to the user. 
We grouped all these instructions inside a try-catch to eventually show an alert if the user will use a non-Chrome browser. So, let's test it. Start the project, as we did before, by clicking on the green Play button on top of the Eclipse toolbar. This will start the embedded Jerry Servlet container that we will use for serving static HTML files as well. Now, we are ready to watch the result directly at localhost colon 8888 slash test.html. Then, you should see a pop-up just under the Chrome address bar that will request for media access. Once you accept to access your media resources, you'll see the webcam output directly in the window of your web browser. That's all. You learned how to use the MediaStream API to easily access media devices. In the next video, we'll talk about peer-to-peer -peer connection establishment through the Peer Connection API.